and welcome to my YouTube video today. So today's video is going to be me running through my top tips of what I have done to make my rental property a little bit more reflective of me. Um, I'm a little bit OCD and a little bit of a control freak. So being in an apartment that I didn't get to choose the color of the walls, I didn't get to choose the carpet or a lot of the furniture, has been a little bit of a struggle and a little bit of um, a little bit difficult for me to accept but in saying that I have invested in a lot of things over the years that have helped me in making this property my own. I think there have been a few things especially that have been um, helpful in making this pro rental property my own. So let's start from the front door. Okay, so we come in the front door, um, here is our utility closet where I try to keep as much of the stuff that is just clutter and things like coats, shoes, all those things that you just don't want people to see or you don't want to see every day. So obviously all of our cleaning stuff, our Hoover, um, laundry basket, things that you just want to hide from people that are coming over um, including your obsession with shoes. So that is all in here hidden away in this closet. Then I'll show you a little bit more of our storage which isn't probably traditionally meant to be used as storage but um, hot press because we don't have lots of guest towels and sheets and all those things just the two of us so um, obviously we keep all of our sheets and stuff in here but also things like kettlebells and um, fitness gear again I like to hide as much of the stuff that you kind of don't use maybe every day or things that just look bulky and aren't meant to be seen really so we hide most of that stuff in there and um, the bathroom Things that, again, storage, I think is really important in um, all of the rooms. So things like storage in the bathroom. So this for me is a bit annoying. I have like cotton wool things to make, take makeup off, makeup wipes, um, his things that are not pretty um, that lie around. I want to get some sort of storage for in here so that that's kind of hidden away. It's a work in progress, um, but definitely try to hide as much of the um, little bathroom bits that you don't use. So obviously you have to have your toothbrush and stuff out to make it a little bit nicer looking. I use a little jar. I wish these kind of things would go away. Um, things like soap, again, you can make it a little bit prettier by getting one like this is from Aldi it doesn't have to be Joe Malone it can be still cheap but go for little decisions like getting this one instead of the Radox one is going to just make those little changes that make a big difference a nice plant in the bathroom uh, towels plain towels plain uh, colors I find are just a little bit more neutral so into the bedroom for those of you who have any of your clothes on display, the storage, um, I have obviously a lot of clothes. So I have to use this rail. I put things that I use mostly and also things that are just look kind of tidy. To make it look even tidier, use all matching um, hangers. Um, so I obviously only have black until here and then I have these hangers. It's not that bad that they're that they're different But try to get them as as seamless as possible this one here for an example an Ugly duckling in the middle of it all. This is just gross. No, I don't like this. This is going to give me anxiety So I'll be changing that later Um, but all of my I haven't I don't have money at the moment to be getting loads of hangers Um, it's kind of last on my list so all of the mismatch hangers I use in here. So obviously all of these are mismatch and it's kind of annoying, but it's hidden away and I don't see it every day, so that's fine. Um, and yeah, little bits that I have bought. I bought this in a charity shop in Ramla. I think it actually closed. It was this little Indian guy and he was really sweet. No, actually he was a little bit scary, but um, it was a really cool shop and I plan on getting a nice big barrel um, shade for that, which I haven't done yet. And this came with the property, can't, can't even look at it. Um, this I got in H&M. So again, things, if you don't have um, money to get lots of nice sheets, 
throws can be a nice investment and um, things that you'll keep and things that don't wear as much so duvet covers and sheets will wear quite quickly whereas um throws will last you a little bit longer so we'll go inside to the living room okay did i mention the candle in there it's very nice smells like coconut and espresso i got that for something ridiculous like 30 something euro but it was worth every single penny moving in here first thing i'm going to get to is books so all of us buy books um they are something that we buy anyway so you might as well use them to make things uh nicer looking in your home these are all kind of just your everyday books they're not particularly uh, beautiful or aesthetically pleasing but together and organized well they're aesthetically pleasing to me anyway i little bits that you can do to make it even nicer is add things like little plants on them um little ornaments i don't like this but sorry gary gary got me this in india my friend and i'm not really a fan of it but i feel so bad for not liking it that i put it there um little bookends i got that on truva i got a few things on this online site recently which i'll come back to in a minute as well and um, but yeah books that are everyday books that maybe aren't aesthetically pleasing organize well make look nice books that are really aesthetically pleasing that you may have invested a little bit more money connor's book here poor charlie's almanac some nerdy book and then mine is a travel book this is all about copenhagen i got this book and magazines are another thing that look really nice i have about a hundred vogue magazines in my mom's house that i brought all the way back from new york i think i spent 200 euro on shipping them back from new york and everyone thought i was crazy but um, i'm going to use them really well in this home soon when this whole disaster is over and i can get them from my mom's um, but things like that, that actually books that look nice, display those ones and then arrange the other ones um, in an organized fashion. Okay, so next thing is art. So I'm really lucky my dad runs a gallery, Green on Red Gallery, and he has always given me art as a kid. I was like, oh like what is this but actually now i have a few bits around the place that i love so much he bought me this jared burn for my 30th birthday domino made this for me for my 30th birthday i'm obviously very privileged to have an artist as a friend and a gallery curator as a dad or owner of the dad um obviously we don't all have that so it doesn't matter you can still um get Kind of cheaper art but things that give you joy things that make you happy for example for connor's or for our four-year anniversary um i'm a very nice girlfriend and he is like all boys he loves oasis i bought this for like 30 euro this print online and then i went to frame just off camden street and i think the framing was like 100 euro but uh Again, that's just over 100 euro that you can get something that you love and it's not like thousands of euro or even hundreds of euro. Um, for me, art is something that I feel just makes a home so much more pleasing to the eye and again, makes it unique to you because it's something that reflects your style, your um, taste. And as, as well, another point for art in your home, especially in a rental property, it doesn't matter that you can't hang those hooks were already there so domino's piece here that she got me and then another piece my dad got me here is um it doesn't need to be hung you can um, stack them they can actually even be really nice i love i've seen on instagram people just putting um art on the walls kind of on the floor and stack them um again they don't have to be on the walls so they can still be unique to you they can give you joy and they don't need to um take away from your deposit okay so another thing is a lot of things in this house maybe not a lot but a few things are things that i have requested as gifts so those who know me know that i'm again very ocd and they very few people are brave enough to buy me something uh, without asking. So I usually have a list of things and um, 
when people ask, I try to ask for things that are meaningful, that I will keep, like not clothes and things like that, um, or kind of, you know, high street clothes or things that just go out of style, either investment pieces or things for my home that will um, make a difference every day to me. So for example, my sister at Christmas asked me what I wanted and I saw this in an industry and it immediately just like it's the most, it just is so beautiful. It's so pretty and it's a flower pot. It was 80 something euro and I was like, oh, like I can barely afford to pay rent. Am I really gonna spend 85 euro on a pot? And um, so I asked my sister to get that for me and I literally love it so much. It just gives me so much joy. And um, things, Again, I asked for this blanket here as a gift. The girls got me this last year for my birthday. I also have a matching cushion that goes with it. Um, but again, it's something that is just gives me joy and it's something that I'll keep um, and add so much to the feeling of the room, I feel. Another thing is candles so candles again are like i showed you in the bathroom really nice to have around obviously they get a nice smell and they make the feel place feel warmer more homey flowers and plants cactus these dry plants i got on truva um and this pot so i've recently got a little bit of an obsession with pots um, and vases and i think this one is just a little bit different i love it and dry plants are thing at the moment and moving on to furniture so obviously like at the moment I would love to buy a couch I can't um, because we can't afford it and secondly there's no point in buying big pieces of furniture that may not fit into your home once you hopefully are lucky enough to buy it um, so things like this trunk, was secondhand store. This was from Age Action on Camden Street. It was twenty euro. Uh, some people might think it's a piece of junk. I absolutely love it. And storage things are not only things that, if you love them, are reflective of your style, your taste, or things that'll give you joy. Are a really great way to remove clutter. So that's one of my biggest things: is always having somewhere to put everything especially when you're living with somebody and they have a lot of stuff as well, it helps you both keep tidy, keep on top of keeping the place nice and tidy. Things that are not, are you okay? Yeah. yeah. Things that aren't used every day. So we have like blankets, cushions for people staying over, um, which we haven't yet done because of the coronavirus, but uh, that's all in this trunk because we don't need to access it on a regular basis. Whereas things that um, that I use every day, so uh, obviously my laptop and stuff is all in here, speakers, uh, yoga blocks, those kind of things that would just look, like if I had all of that stuff out and about, it would just look like clutter, messy. So using these kind of things or buying um, little storage spaces that are uh, pleasing to the eye, I think are one, is one of the, the, the biggest kind of, or a, a really good trick to keeping your place looking nice. Wires is another thing. So this wasn't uh, something I was gonna talk about, but um, while we're here, this space here was just all wires and I've put them all behind that couch. Um, it's a nice way just to keep the place looking a little bit tidier. So this kitchen table is, for me, gross. Uh, yeah, it's just a cheap kitchen table with those matching chairs. Uh, I got this tablecloth in H&M. Linen, I love it so much. The color is neutral. It's just, yeah, it just makes such a difference to the whole space, really. Things that, so another thing that I like to do is things like, let's say, kettlebells, resistant bands, those kind of things that you do not want to have to see every day that are bulky and also that you don't really use every day. Those are things that you can store away and keep out of the way. Things like salt and pepper things, like I think this was only actually, I can't really remember, but I bought an article in Paris Court and it was something like 30 euro for the two of them, which actually isn't that bad. And it's something that we use every day because it's on the table and we use them for eating every night. So it's, it's 
that is where I would choose to spend my money um, rather than spending money, especially in the beginning when you're uh, moving into somewhere, don't invest in things like really nice looking pots. Like I'd love to have a set of matching pots and pans, but they're not like, I don't have a lot of money and like they're not the kind of thing that I see every day. So instead of investing in things like that, I would choose to invest in uh, things like cups. So here I display the things that I like, the things that I have spent money on that give me joy. Uh, these little glasses we got in, in industry, they were I think four or six euro each. Um, these Amazon um, or these mason bowl jars are amazing for storage. Tea bags, coffee, uh, overnight oats, water, um, and they are, they look nice and they're matching and everything. So things that you have matching things of are nice to display, but just naturally people like it's nice to look at. Instead of putting like mix match plates or bowls or stuff like that up there, it just makes those small little things make a difference. Um, things like, like here, like I was discussing before, this Radox thing, it was a, an impulse buy or a purchase of desperation. Uh, it is not nice. It doesn't look nice, so that will be going soon. Uh, fairy liquid, all those kind of things, out of sight. Things like you need to be uh, cooking with salt and pepper. Get nice little salt and pepper things for the, beside the cooker. It makes a difference. Cooking books is a really nice way. Again, use your books. They make the place look homier um, and are reflective of you. I think that's kind of everything. Um, yeah. Okay, so to recap on my top tips to make a rental property your home. First, I would have a place to store everything. It is super important to keep the place tidy, keep the place zen-like, <laughs> zen-like for you to be able to chill out and enjoy your home and come home to a place with good energy, have a place to store everything, even from a drawer for wires, phones, anything like that. That is, for me, has made a difference to how my home always feels, which is really important. And um, things, yeah, like storing your coats and things like that, try to have those things, bulky things hidden and um, have your uh, pretty, more aesthetically pleasing things on display. Uh, number two is art. So you don't have to invest a lot of money in art, but it's something that I know personally for me has given me a lot of joy. I've grown up with a lot of art, so it's something that makes a difference to me. It does make me feel more at home. And yeah, investing in art is something that I, I think is really important. There are things that you can keep as well and pass on to your children or whatever. 30 books. So again, doesn't have to be, you don't have to invest a lot of money in books. You can organize them in an orderly fashion, looks really good, add maybe a nice bookend, doesn't have to be expensive. And you can not even display, like I didn't, like those books were quite expensive, but it doesn't have to be even books. It can be like a stack of Vogue magazines or interior magazines, anything like that, that you've, um, keep them. And when you buy a, like a seven euro magazine, if you have a few of them, that's something that you can display as like an interior object. So, um, fourthly, uh, candles I think are really important for, again, just giving that sense of warmth, aren't really expensive, and lastly, plants and cactus, those kind of things, again, give a little bit of life to your home. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I could probably go on and on, I'd probably repeat myself a million times though, so um, I'm going to continue to update you on little things that I begin to notice that I do in my home to make myself feel more at home. And yeah, I, th I hope that I demonstrated how little you actually have to do to make a rental property a home. And 
you don't have to wait and I think that's really important it's been something that's been really important to me especially living in Ireland the a lot of us are in the same situation where owning our own property is something that we might have to wait a really long time to do in this um, market so why wait until you have your own home to feel at home I think it's really important to do that now and to do little things I think I've hopefully shown you the little things that you can do to um, get that dream home now where you are and um, yeah so I'll continue to update you I'll do more videos of this I might do a little series um, with uh, my updates on new purchases things like that that I have bought and I know you're all nosy parkers like me and love to see all those things so I'll tag everything that I have recently bought that is buyable and I'll tag all that in the links below so if there's anything that you really liked that you can invest in as well and yeah I hope to see you again soon and I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you got value from the video and yeah have a great day thanks so much for watching so as promised as part of my home video I'm going to be doing an unboxing of my new investment piece super excited um, I don't know whether to tell you what it's going to be or just to show you for, as a little surprise. Um, anyway, so I'll start. I don't know if I've ever done an unboxing before on um, here, but I can imagine that I'm going to be probably awkward and not as smooth as most of the bloggers I've seen do this kind of thing. Um, so, these cute little bags that come with it. Um, the shoes, obviously. If you thought it was bags, you don't know me very well. So, here are my new Burberry Bros. So I really wanted the Prada ones, but um, oh, <laughs> quite a strong smell of like leather. Or, anyway, um, the chunky Prada loafers that everybody is or brogues that everybody's wearing, I really, really liked. But they're like I think nearly eight hundred euro, so um, that is out of my budget. And um, frankly, these are too, but um. Again, if you know me, I usually do shop out of my budget. So uh, anyway, so here are my chunky Burberry brogues that I am so obsessed with. Um, I invested in those Edie's um, Chelsea boots about, God, it's almost a year now. Um, or no, it was last November um, or October and it was like the best investment. I was so delighted with myself over winter having those boots that I will have literally for ever um, and they'll never go out of style and these are the kind of things that won't go out of style and um, they might go out of style the chunkiness for a while but they'll definitely come back in and um, just like Doc Martens or anything like that and um, so I'm delighted these were I think uh, no they're sorry I was gonna say 300 but they were 550 and um, I got them a few months ago and I literally have left them in their box until um, now so um, yeah I'm really excited to style them and maybe later today I will style them and include it in the video or you can check it out on my Instagram. <laughs>